Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hopefully you're having a great day. It's Newton here with you again. It's another Thursday. Crazy, man. This year's just going by too fast. Can't believe it's already middle October. Um, man, we got <laughs> just less than a couple weeks. We got Halloween, and then we get into Thanksgiving. We get into Christmas. We get into way too much, man. <clears throat> but, hey, what can you do? I guess this is what happens when you get older. Uh, if you're a young guy listening... It goes by fast, so so enjoy it. It's crazy how fast this goes by. So um, again, hope you're having a good week. Before we get into this week's episode, just want to let you know this episode brought to you by Titleist and Titleist Team Titleist. So uh, you know, Team Titleist more than just like a name, uh, just something they have. Uh, I mean, it's a community of golfers just like we are. Titleist has created this community to connect us with product experts, host events. Provide opportunities like prototype testing, white box testing. I know we just saw some of that uh, just recently. Um, you know, there was new golf balls, no pro, new Pro V1s kind of coming out. Um, so a lot of people who were part of Team Titleist got a shot to try those out early. Pretty cool thing if you're signed up. Um, you know, but not only that, you get to be part of that R&D process and kind of give your feedback. And I think they sent a little survey with it, all that. Um, but it also offers you, you know, special prototype gear, uh, things like that. So definitely check out uh, Team Titleist. If you go to Titleist.com forward slash Team Titleist, all one word, and uh, check out that. I am signed up. I am a Team Titleist person. So um, haven't tested any balls uh, this year. I didn't uh, didn't get around to that, but uh, you know I am uh, I've signed up and uh, I'm part of that uh, that group. So again, another Thursday, man. Welcome back to the week. It is uh, it's crazy. It is crappy weather here in Metro Detroit. It's supposed to be nice by the weekend. So hopefully. Um, I'll get out and maybe play a little bit. I'm still going to try to play today. It's not amazing today uh, in terms of weather-wise. It's, uh, let's see, right now it's, it's going to be kind of like 50-ish, hopefully, um, <laughs> which is, I know for a lot of people, uh, uh, a little cool. I know I was talking to uh, somebody at the OEM site out in San Diego uh, on Tuesday and <laughs> said something about uh, the temperature and playing golf, and he was like, man, he's like, you are nuts. He's like, it's going to be 80 degrees here and, you know, all that. He's like, there's no way I can play at, you know, 50 degrees or, or anything around there. So I totally understand it. Uh, not everybody is, uh, you know, has the thick blood like some of us uh, northerners. But for us northerners, man, season is uh, is rapidly coming to an end, which is is scary, because it, uh, I don't want it to end, I know, uh, there's some years where the golf game isn't so bad that I just don't care, I'm like, you know, shut it down, let's take a little break, and it's probably better for my game, um, but I think this year, it's just, and I thought I played well, because I haven't, but certain things here and there kind of spark up, and I hit clubs well, and all that, and now with all the new gear, I mean, it's like, I don't, I don't want the season to end, man, I want to keep playing, I want to, <laughs> you know, I want to do some stuff, and, uh, you know, keep hitting clubs, and all that, and I know I'll go to the range and I'll, you know, go to the heated bays and I've got the launch monitors and all that. And, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do that stuff. It'll be cool, but uh, it, it's still not the same as getting out actually on the course. So hopefully some OEMs, uh, if you guys are listening, have me out, you know, bring me out for uh, to, to hang out, see the new gear, and, and maybe then we can tee it up uh, down in Southern California. But, uh, again, hopefully everybody's having a great week. Uh, crazy. I, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those Halloween's coming up. Uh, it's, what is it, today's the 20th, so we've got 11 days, we've got Halloween, it's, um, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I can't believe it's already middle of, of October, my daughter already had her birthday, I mean, October's going crazy, so, uh, remind me as well, I gotta get my wife a gift, it's, uh, <laughs> her birthday's here in about a week, so, uh, I better, I better start searching for what I'm gonna buy, but, um, yeah, but, it's, so I've been, uh, playing a little bit still, still playing on Thursday nights, uh, or Thursday afternoons slash evenings, I'm going to start to keep going a little earlier and a little earlier because uh, it, it just gets dark faster. Uh, now, I mean, you, you start at like 4. Uh, you can probably get close to 18 in if there's nobody else on the course. You know, if it's pretty open, you can probably get 18 in. Um, but it's pretty dark here about s between 7 and 7.30. So, yeah, we started last week. We, we started at 4. I don't think we, we I think our tee time was 4.30 or 4.40. We teed off a little bit before that. Um, and then we got... We got all 18 in, I think. Uh, I think the 18th hole, again, hitting into that, it was super dark. Um, so that, was, uh, that, that wasn't that was amazing. But um, we got most of the holes in. We got 16, 17 holes in. <clears throat> Yesterday, or last weekend, I was busy. I uh, did a lot of family stuff. I had a little girl, hung out with my wife, so didn't play uh, golf there. Got some stuff done around the house that I hadn't done because uh, my summers I'm playing golf and hanging out at the cottages, man. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I've been trying to, you know, get that stuff done, and now I am uh, in 
it's still golf related, but I'm in golf cart mode. So I've got my golf cart home from uh, from my in-laws' place. Uh, they have a place a uh, little on the east side of uh, Michigan. I got my brought my golf cart home on a uh, on a barge, which I think I told about. And, you know, basically went and got a trailer, brought it home, and uh, got a bunch of maintenance to do. So that'll be interesting. I'm not a I, I would say I'm a fairly handy guy. I could fix a lot of things. I can build some stuff. Uh, I would not say I'm you know. I'm not Bob Vila, I'm not a professional car mechanic, I'm not, you know, amazing at anything, but I can kind of get a few things done, and I'm, I've got the confidence where I'll pretty much try most things in terms of trying to fix them or trying to build them or whatever. I'm not, not too frightened about it, but uh, the first time working on golf carts, so I haven't done that. I've got a list of things to do. I've written it down over here, so I've got to do things like, you know, the rear differential oil, I've got to fix, uh, the lights don't really work, so I've got a, a light kit I'm going to put on it. Um, it has lights, but the, the wiring kind of a mess. Um, I, I kind of want to paint it, but we'll see. That, that's kind of one of those things that maybe happens. But i got to change the oil, change all the filters, change some of the belts. Uh, the belts on it are, um, are starting to become a little old, uh, getting a little slippage, especially if it's uh, a little wet out. And then uh, one of the, the belts, when I was looking at it, is uh, got a couple big cracks. So, um, But it's a gas easy go. I don't know if it's it's – it's like a 94. And I know 94 is kind of like – the cutoff between marathon and TXT, which TXT is kind of like the newer, uh, the newer style, and the the marathon was the older one. It's it may be a marathon chassis with a TXT body, but <clears throat> either way, I've got uh, some projects there, which I'm kind of excited. I've been uh, been doing some research online, and there's a lot of golf cart enthusiasts. I'll tell you that there's a lot of information out there um, about how to do things and how to fix things and what to change and all that. So it's pretty. Uh, pretty exciting so i'm gonna try uh try my hand at that and do like my list of one two three uh, like 11 uh maintenance things uh, i'm gonna try to do that uh, on there so we'll see so most of them are pretty easy a few of them maybe a little more difficult so we'll see where we go but uh it'll be interesting to try uh my hand at another piece of golf you know another part of golf and do some uh um, some uh, some golf cart repair so and if anybody has a wiring diagram or I guess a wiring diagram. I really need like a wiring, like full outline for a gas easy go, like a 94. It would be extremely helpful. Uh, I've been looking online. It's hard to find. I got like, somebody had one, but I got to sign up for another website and I didn't want to do that. But if anybody out there, you work at a place and uh, you're familiar with, uh, you know, some easy go golf cart maintenance, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram at Club Junkie Pod. Send me a DM and uh, let me know because I'm, uh, I'm jumping in. It's going to be interesting. It'll be uh, it'll it'll be fun. I'm excited. So over the winter, I'll, uh, I'll I'll do some work, and then once it's done, I'll trailer back up and put it back at my in-laws' place and run it for another, you know another few years, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, it's it's been I wouldn't say neglected. I mean, when I first bought it, I did all the uh, did the oil changes, did the stuff like that, and then it's been a couple of years though. So I, 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 the stuff's due. The maintenance is, uh, is is overdue a little bit, so I'll do that, and it'll be fun. But, uh, but yeah, I played a little bit and um, playing a lot. I, I've been kind of messing with a few different things, and I've got a few different things to hit. Like this, like today, I, I'm, uh, when I go out and play, I got a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna go hit the new PXG zero two one one stuff. Um, I got the new the new woods. So I've got the driver five wood seven wood. A um, little uh, not bummed, a little bummed that they don't have uh, the the adjustable interchangeable shafts on the fairways, just because it would have been nice to kind of take. The shafts out of mine, put them in there, and kind of go head to head. But all good. They sent them in the in the specs that I got fit to when I got fit for the Gen Five stuff. So it's not out of you know it's not out of whack anything like that. It'll be uh, really easy to do. And then the driver is interchangeable, so I can toss uh, you know shafts in there. But it's got a Ventus Six uh, X in there as it is. The driver does. So pretty excited. Uh, so that's, that, that'll be pretty cool to hit that stuff. I haven't really hit any of the two one one woods ever. So I've hit the two one one irons, but I've never hit the two one one woods. So it'll be cool to see, you know, forgiveness wise and all that, how it compares with the Gen Five. And then uh, I've got what else do I have? Uh, I've got those uh, the Mizuno. Well, I've got the Mizuno Hot Metal Pro, Hot Metal Hot Metal High Launch. I got those three, but I've only got a four seven pitching wedge uh, in each one. So it's just hard to get out there and play with those three irons just because it's three irons so i'm gonna put like three random irons in the bag i don't know how they're gonna gap or anything like that but i'm gonna get out there and i'll probably put them in this thursday and go play them um at least the pros i'll play the pros i know a lot of people are interested in the pros um the uh, the the jpx 923 forged and tour not out yet 
so those will be coming, I think, later in the year. Uh, I should get uh, a few of those and, and be able to take those out. But I've just got the hot metals right now, so I'm going to hit those. And then, uh, yeah, I've got uh, a couple of things, uh, a couple putters I can't really t I can't talk about yet. Um, those aren't until next month uh, that I'll be able to talk about those, but I'll have at least one of those uh, putters out on the course. And then, uh, yeah, the thing I've been messing with uh, recently that I've actually been pretty excited to, uh, to hit and, and talk about has been <clears throat> new wedge shafts. So... Wedge shafts are already interesting because I think people are really now starting to get into wedge and putter shafts. Wedges, wedge shafts, putter shafts, no one ever really talked about. Uh, when I kind of first got on Golf WRX back in like 2006, it was just, you kind of played what was in there. Uh, for putters, it was pretty much steel shafts. There might have been one or two graphite, real special graphite options that like Fujinkura made for like Scotty Cameron, or um, I think there was like a Diamata putter shaft a long time ago, but... It was pretty rare. There weren't a whole lot of options out there in terms of putter shafts. It just was pretty much stock. And then wedge shafts, uh, it pretty much was the dynamic gold. And there was maybe one or two other options, but it was pretty much a dynamic gold or, uh, you know, a rebranded <clears throat> dynamic gold with whatever that company, that OEM was, uh, as their wedge shaft. And there wasn't a whole lot of options. You pretty much just went in and you bought the lofts uh, that kind of corresponded with your game or your iron set, and that is a lot of that has changed, especially in the the past few years with <clears throat> the ability to get wedges with different grinds, uh, you know, tons of different lofts, different shafts now, all that, and it's just kind of expanded. And I think a lot of people are taking their short game, short game clubs, much more serious. Uh, they're putting more thought into it. Uh, they're not just you know, when I worked at a shop in early two thousand one ish, two ish, right around there. Um, Actually, it was longer than that, but it might have been three, four, five, whatever. But early 2000s, uh, when I was working in a shop, it, it wasn't really any thought. I mean, most people just came in, they bought a 52, a 56, and a 60, and they walked out. Uh, they bought it from their saver, you know, they'd, they'd set a couple down, liked the look of one, and, and they'd walk out with it, and that was it. Um, you know, and, and bounce and things like that, they weren't really, they weren't really talked about. Consumers really didn't know much about them. It was just, uh, even, even working in the shop, I mean, you knew about bounce, but... It was really maybe there were two options. I think Cleveland was like the big one that they had like three. You know, they had a, a low, medium, and high bounce. And, you know, you'd always try to explain to a customer basically what it is. And most of them would go with medium or low bounce. And no one ever went with high. <clears throat> it just, well, very rarely. Um, but, yeah, it was just a, a different time back then. And nobody really went crazy with short game stuff. Uh, but now, especially the past couple of years, there's so many new wedge and putter products and i've gone through a lot of the putter shafts and um you know there's a bunch of them out there and, and every company now is making kind of a higher end either more stable or whatever you know they're making a, a a putter shaft for certain things and you know looking to see what performance gains can be had there and same thing with wedges now we're really starting to see i mean there's always been you know over the past few years kbs has made a handful of wedge shafts um you know even true tempers made a couple uh, Project X is now kind of shown off on tour that they've got a Project X wedge shaft. I mean, um, you know, the graphite companies have made specific wedge shafts that are either a little heavier or whatever. So we're starting to see more and more of the wedge stuff, uh, the wedge shafts and all the short game stuff kind of come into play and a lot more uh, technology being pushed into that area, which is which is pretty cool because you think about, you know, how often you use a wedge, how often you use your putter. I mean, you use your putter every single hole, um, unless you're extremely fortunate to hole out or hit a hole in one. Um, <clears throat> but use your, your putter, you know, minimum 18 times around. You use wedges, you know, a ton. It, it, it's just, they're the clubs you use the most, and, and now we're starting to put a lot of thought into them. We're starting to get into the fitting side of it and all that. And um, It's kind of cool to see these new products. So the, the wedge shaft that... Uh, or wood shafts that I've been messing with um, are from BGT, which is Breakthrough Golf uh, Technology, and they've got uh, which you've probably seen online. I know I think I've already posted a photo or whatever, but the new ZNE or Zone uh, wedge shafts. So these here are very similar to their putter shafts, where they are multi-piece, so they're graphite steel and uh, a little bit of aluminum in there and they're making a three different weights on it so you're going to have the zne and a 130 you're going to have a zne and a 115 
and a ZNE and or zone in a 90. So you're going to have three different uh, versions of the shaft depending on kind of what weight, what flex, everything that you want. Um, the 130, of course, is going to be the heaviest. It's also going to be the most stiff. I believe the CPM on it is something like 530, which is crazy, crazy stiff. Uh, but it comes in 130 grams, and what they're doing is they've got a kind of straight taper carbon uh, or composite handle section. So where the grip goes on, uh, this whole section is all uh, all composite, all carbon fiber, and then they have an aluminum coupler, as they call it, which is that little tapered uh, part, much like the like I said, the putter shafts where you saw that they had um, a little kind of a tapered piece there. But that's aluminum, and then a steel tip section that is bonded. Uh, into this coupler. So <clears throat> the putter shafts, it was interesting because you would buy it and it would come in three pieces or two pieces and you would epoxy them together and uh, or have your club build builder do it and you could kind of put it on different... Uh, you, you could either use like the double bend section of your putter shaft or whatever. These come the way they are. So you have steel tip already bonded, already glued in uh, to the aluminum coupler and then to the, uh, the composite or graphite section. Uh, of the uh, of the shaft, so built up. Uh, they, they they look pretty, you know. They look so they look a, a slight bit different. There is a little taper section, so you know. I would say about a foot uh, away from uh, maybe a little more than that, maybe about 15, 16 inches from the, the the club head. You get this little taper section, and then you get the graphite, you know, up through the grip. It uh, you know at first when you pull the, the shaft out um, it looks a little different once you get it shafted up you set it down the first time you're going to look at it you're going to kind of notice it and say oh that's kind of interesting but the way they colored it like the 130 is all black so it's matte black matte black matte black matte black so it all kind of blends in um, the 115 is silver but even so like the silver isn't you know again same thing like you set it down and yes you notice there's silver there but it's really like it's not bright it's kind of like a I don't call it matte, but it's like a satin silver color. And again, it blends in pretty darn nicely uh, with the black coupler and black steel tip section. Uh, now, the 90 gram one, um, I think, actually has a, a graphite tip section. Uh, I haven't seen the, uh, I, I didn't get the 90 gram one in. It does have a silver handle section, much like the 115. Uh, I think the little logo, the ZN, the zone, the ZNE uh, section is, uh, or, or logo is white instead of orange. But overall, I think it's a very similar color, and it just has a, uh, a carbon uh, tip section. So um, with these there, they uh, require no tipping. Building them up is super straightforward. It's just like regular any regular, any regular shaft, uh, wedge shaft. Basically, put your uh, you know mark on the shaft, uh, the, the hosel depth, sand it, you know, sand it down, prep the tip, uh, glue it together, cut the butt, the, the butt end down to whatever you know length you play your wedges at, slap a grip on, and you're done. Um, the nice thing is I built these up, and so I put these in my TaylorMade Mill Grind 3 head. So I've got a 52 that is actually bent to 51, uh, and my 56 that I've been gaming for a while. Um, so both of these are, uh, they were standard. Uh, they came with the, the same, I think it was like an S200 uh, shaft. I mean, they were pretty uh, standard. I think I put Modus 125s in them uh, for, yeah, they did, because I pulled out Modus 125. So I pulled <laughs> Modus 125 wedges in here uh, in both of these. But then putting these in, uh, in terms of the 115 and the 130, building them up, uh, they built up really well. They uh, actually, you know, swing weight wise, I was a little worried with the 130 just because it's it's so heavy. But um, the 130, I built that thing up. No tip weight weight needed. D4 swing weight at standard length with my uh, typical King Grasp uh, Amazon special grip that I put on all these things that I buy uh, dirt cheap, but it works pretty darn good. Um, and with the amount of shafts and clubs that I go through, you know, this thing is uh, well worth it. When you can get 13 grips for 38 bucks shipped to your house uh, that actually are round and are made out of rubber and actually have a little bit of traction to them, it's kind of nice. But uh, in this year, though, built up to D4 with no tip weights, anything. Uh, and then uh, on the 115, same thing, it built up to, I think, uh, right around D3. It was a hair lighter. Uh, I think it was D2 or D3, I don't remember exactly. I should have put it on the scale right before I recorded this, but I didn't. But uh, it built up almost perfectly, you know, without tip weights, anything, uh, just basically putting it together. So installation-wise, really simple. Uh, uh, BGT has kind of nailed the uh, the swing weight of it. It's definitely uh, something you're not going to have to worry about. Plug it in big tip weights or using a bunch of lead tape or whatever to get the feel or, or the balance right. Uh, they are built, uh, you know, they, they design these things where they're, they're built up pretty easy and, and they built up pretty, uh, 
um, you know, right to swing weight. So uh, unless you have some crazy build, if you go super over length, you might have to worry a little bit about uh, things getting a little heavy. But um, for the most part, if you're anywhere close to standard, I think you'll be just fine. Um, so I have a 115 and a 130. Uh, I asked for both uh, when they offered them to me. So I put the 115 and the 52, and the 56, uh, I put the 130. And I do have to say, so the, the whole big thing is stability. You know, these things are made to be more accurate, whether it comes to distance control, dispersion, they're just meant to be more accurate, uh, offer more accurate wedge shots. And the first thing I did is once I built them, I took them to the range first, because I was headed there. And I do have to say the one thing, they go straight. They go kind of stupid straight. Wherever you, wherever your hands are going to manipulate the face to be open, closed, square, that is where the ball's going. Um, there is not, there was never a shot where you felt like, man, I thought I hit that a little right and it went left or, you know, whatever. Like, they went exactly where you were set up and where your swing uh, basically took the club or the, you know, wherever your swing made the face line up at impact, that's where the ball was going. These things were extremely consistent. I was really kind of shocked with the, because the first one I hit was the 56, uh, so I took that 130 out, um, and I was just hitting a few shots, warming up, and there's, uh, you know, at the, the range that I've uh, kind of gone back to, the old, uh, you know, Gratiot Golf Center over in uh, the east side, they, uh, they've they got a green out there, and I think it's at like 110-ish, something like that, <clears throat> maybe right about 100, a little more. But anyway, I don't hit my 56 crazy long, but just hitting shots, I mean, at that flag, everything was just on the green. Everything was just, I mean, it was short, but it was like within the green proportions. Um, but it, everything was just dead straight. I mean, the first couple, the first shot I hit, I was like, okay, you know, kind of honeymoonish, whatever. The next one I hit was right at it, right at it, right at it. I mean, I don't think out of all the balls I hit, which is probably 10 balls of the, there, I mean, I, I don't, I think maybe one, I missed the, uh, the actual green, and that's just, probably because I came over the top, down, steep on it, uh, and hit it left. But uber, uber consistent. Um, if you made good contact, the ball went exactly where, you know, distance-wise, where it should go. But on the range, both of them, same thing. And then hitting the 115 with the gap wedge, that one actually get it onto the green there, because like I said, I think it's a, a little over 100 yards to the actual flag. And... Hitting it there, it was, it was the same thing, just knocking balls just dead straight. They just went dead straight. Everything was. Um, and it was just extremely repetitive with both. I mean, they are really, and I think part of it is, I mean, these things are stiff. and They've got this big, you know, carbon section, you know, for the handle. And, um, but the ball just wants to go straight or wants to go where you where you aim it, where the club face is. When, when you make impact, that is where it's going. Um, it definitely... Was extremely accurate on the range, um, both you know, like I said, distance-wise, uh, especially with kind of more full shots, is where I can notice it. I don't have the game really. Just, I mean, yes, I can hit some partial shots and hit stuff in there, but if you say hit, you know, 10, 50-yard shots in a row, I'm not going to hit them all 50 yards. Uh, with full swings or closer to it, I can definitely have a little more repetitive. You know, be a little more repetitive, um, and the 115 was super easy to uh, you know to, to hit those shots. Um, it is a little lighter than the most 125. I didn't really notice anything crazy in terms of the weight of this one. Uh, the 115 kind of fit in really well. I mean, I'm playing a, a much lighter uh, iron shaft in terms of the, the Elevate 95s. So moving into this was, you know, it, it's slightly heavier, but it's not a huge, huge difference. Um, the 130, you definitely, to me at least, I noticed the difference in weight. Um, you could definitely feel it when I picked that club up, the static weight of it, it definitely is a little bit heavier. Uh, but the 115 wasn't too bad, especially coming from a Modus 125. I didn't really notice a huge, huge difference. It was a really easy transition going to the 115, um, you know, especially in the gap wedge for, for the full shots. Um, out on the course, this thing was pretty much the same, especially with the gap wedge, because I, I do use it a little bit around the green for, for chip shots and pit shots and things like that. Um, everything that I, I used it for there was was really good i mean it, it really does the nice thing is it's just really it, it's really stiff like i said the cpm i think is 500 cpm for the uh the 115 and 530 for the 130 which is extremely stiff uh for a wedge shaft but you know it does it it, it does feel stiff but it's kind of like it feels it feels really controlled like you just know exactly where the club face is uh the whole time so full shots uh, much like the range, I mean, everything I hit, I, I probably 
haven't had that much confidence hitting into greens from like 90 or 100 yards because <clears throat> that's what I pretty much use uh, the 52 for, or the 52. I said bent to 51. Um, that I pretty much use this for uh, all those shots. If it's 100 yards, unless it's downwind, uh, I'm using the 52. Uh, but using this thing for all those 50, 90, to, it's pretty much like 10, 110 is like my max with it. And really, that's even a struggle. But that, that 110 to kind of like 90 is where I use this thing. And I don't think I've ever. You know, this year at least had the confidence swinging into those those shots because I mean I, I'll still miss a fair amount of those greens, um, but man I was just you know just swinging and 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 just hitting the ball pretty much right at target. I, I don't feel like I've been that accurate uh, in a while uh, than I was in the course hitting uh, hitting balls of this thing, and it was one of those you know everything I miss is typically left of the target uh, that's usually what I do if I unless you know unless I hit it I chunk it but everything's a little left of target when I hit it and everything was just right left of target or, or just left of target which is pretty much where I hit it when I'm hitting it good because again I come down I have a shut face at the top come over the top a little bit I hit it a little left and uh, which is fine but this thing was just really really consuming every shot that I hit into the green was was solid. I mean, it was just, uh, I hit most shots solid. I mean, if I missed it low in the face and I, and I thinned it a little bit, I mean, there's, there's nothing that this shaft is going to do for that. Um, but it just felt, you know, it, it felt like you just kind of knew where the club head was the whole time. It's, it's kind of like the putters, uh, the putter shaft versions where as you take the putter back and through the putter doesn't feel like it moves or, or opens or closes or does anything during the stroke during the swing. This thing doesn't feel like it does anything. It just kind of goes with your swing. And, um, you know, as long as you, Hit it, release it, and hit it towards the target. That's where it is going. Uh, but it was extremely consistent. Every yardage in terms of hitting, you know, if I was hitting a 90, if I was hitting a 100 or whatever, if I put a decent swing on it there, it was going pretty much at my target, and it pretty much was extremely predictable. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, launch, uh, I thought it kind of launched a little, actually, just a little bit higher uh, than the Modus. Um, I would say if you're playing a dynamic gold, I think it launches very, very similar. Um the, the Modus for me has always been kind of one of the lower launching wedge shafts that I've tried. Uh, these things here launch just a little bit higher, especially on the, the more fuller shots, the, the 100, 105, 90 yard shots. Those shots for me, this thing launched a little higher. Um, but it, it wasn't one of those things where it was crazy high. It was just, you know, just slightly higher in terms of initial launch. Distance wise, still got it there with no problem. I didn't have to swing harder or softer or anything like that. Um, but I think with that higher launch, it did come come into the green and, and stop just as quickly, if not uh, as fast. Um, out of the rough, I probably stopped it a little quicker just because it came in, uh, you know, came into the green a little uh, a little steeper in terms of the angle of the descent. But overall, um, just really consistent in terms of full shots. Uh, it was it was really impressed. I, I wasn't expecting to see much of a difference. I mean, it's a wedge shaft. You know, you're hitting. 100 yard shots and in, you know, what are you really going to see? And uh, on full shots, really did feel, you know, a lot of confidence that you could just take a swing and, and that ball was going to be exactly where it needed to be. Uh, and it really was. Um, the little chip shots, pitch shots around the green, um, they, they do feel a little different because this is so stout. Uh, I think you do, um, I wouldn't say you lose feel, but uh, it, it definitely doesn't have, you know, the shaft doesn't have that same little bit of kick uh, that, that sometimes you feel as you kind of ch hit chip and pitch shots. Um, it, it definitely kind of has this stout feel kind of that it's kind of one with your hands. And if the, if it, you know, if your hin wrists don't hinge and you kind of play that Steve Stricker real, you know, no, no, no movement in the wrists and just hit, the, that's kind of what it feels like. Um, and it just is, you know, stout overall feel. It is uh, a little bit softer. I think it, it, it definitely reduces some vibration compared to like, you know, the Modus, uh, or like a, 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 dy a dynamic gold, uh, wedge shaft. Uh, for some players, I think it does, you know, I'll, I'll give the one knock, I'll give it, it maybe deadens the feel a little too much uh, on certain shots and maybe depending on the type of ball you play. Uh, if you're somebody who plays like a really soft, say like Chrome Soft with a really soft forged head, um, this on some of those, uh, you know, little shots around the green, you may not feel the misses as much. Um, it may reduce just a little bit more vibration than, uh, you know, than a traditional shaft and, and you may have to get used to that. But I think anything that, you know, if you play a kind of a, a Pro V1 style ball and, you know, a, 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 like a mill grind three or a, a Vokey, you know, a, a typical head, um, I don't think you're going to, you know, lose enough feel where it's going to be anything detrimental to uh, uh, to your hands, even if you're a real, you know, club pro guy slash feel player. Um, but around the greens, chipping, pitching, all that, uh, again, extremely, extremely consistent. 
Um, and again, I don't feel like I ever had a shot that, you know, went, went differently than I thought it would. You know, everything was super predictable. When you get into the 130, uh, which like I said, I put in my sand wedge, um, you know, a lot of partial shots, uh, I really like, kind of did like the weight. Uh, I mean, it is definitely noticeable, it, it is noticeably heavier than the 115 in terms of static weight when you have it on the course. Uh, but I kind of liked it. I mean, the, the shorter shots, uh, I can get a little quick. I can get uh, a, a little quick. I kind of have an early release with all my clubs, so it kind of happens with some of the shorter, you know, chip and pitch shots as well. I felt like a little extra weight kind of helped my tempo a little bit. I kind of noticed the club was there, um, and I kind of felt a little bit more of the club being there, and I think I was a little more, a little more slow and a little more deliberate uh, with my, you know, my takeaway and, and bringing it into the ball. Um, but these kind of shorter partial shots uh, with this, this zone 130, again, really just really consistent i mean you know those 50 yard shots things like that that you're kind of either hitting it over a bunker or up onto the green um you know in terms of launch difference between the 130 and the motors i didn't notice much of a difference there especially with like the like i said 30 to 50 yard shots there wasn't a huge difference there um you know opening the face closing the face stuff like that uh, those type of manipulated shots they're all going to be a little different anyway uh, but the overall trajectory i didn't notice a huge difference and same thing spin Pretty much seemed the same. I mean, everything checked up pretty hard. Um, you know, fuller shots, I was a little more confident with the 56 uh, with this shaft in it than I was before. It just, you know, I think something with just the stiffness of it and the overall, you know, stiffness of it just, you know, kind of gave me that uh, that feel like, you know, you could swing it a little harder without having things go, uh, you know, the shaft influence as much or you kind of could swing it a little harder and know exactly where the, the, the club face was brought the whole swing um out of the sand it was great uh i actually hit it into quite a few bunkers uh, when i was <laughs> playing with it and uh one thing i did to say the mg3 head i've been a big fan just the you know the standard sb grind kind of the full sole but hit it well out of the uh out of the traps and uh you know even like i said those little partial shots all that were were no problem um got up and down out of the traps uh, or got up out of the traps pretty easily i wouldn't say I got up and down all the time but i got up out of the traps no problem um, and then those little kind of, you know, delicate pitch, shit, pitch and chip shots around the green um, were really easy to hit. And, uh, you know, like I said, the, the whole time you always felt like you had a little bit, you know, just a little bit more control, a little bit more uh, um, consistency there uh, to hit those shots. And, you know, yes, the, the 130 is technically stiffer than the 115. I didn't notice really a huge difference between the two. I think once you get into, you know, 500, 530 CPMs, I mean, you're, you're talking about pretty stiff wedges. So between the two, you know, was there a huge difference in, in terms of loading and, and, and that? No, they're both crazy stiff. There isn't much loading of the shaft as you uh, you start your downswing with either one of them. Um, you know, maybe a hair more with the 115, you can feel it a little bit. But uh, unless you're probably a much bigger swinger, big hitter, bigger hitter than I am, uh, you're probably not going to notice a whole much of loading or unloading on these bad boys. Um which, which I kind of like. I mean, the, the, the stiffness factor of it. Um, I know people always say, you know, go a little heavier, a little softer in the wedges. Uh, you know, I think there's something to say for going heavier and stiffer or even, you know, s traditional weight and, uh, and stiffer. Uh, there's just something about it that, uh, that kind of feels pretty good. And, uh, you know, the, the, like I said, the, the one thing I could say is, is everything was consistent, whether it's distance control, uh, you know, whether it's dispersion, then, and distance control for me is erratic. It doesn't matter. I mean, you could put any shaft in here, and I'm going to have a little bit of distance control issues. But in terms of dispersion, it was – I definitely saw, uh, you know, I, I hit balls closer to the hole or more consistently closer to the hole with these two shafts than I did with standard steel shafts. So, um, you know, people always ask me with stuff like this that, that you know, are, are expensive and, um, you know, should I – are they worth it? You know, I guess is always the question that uh, that people always ask is, you know, especially with, you know, the, the $200 plus putter shafts and, you know, these are $180 each, you know, for so each wedge is, you know, 180 bucks. Is it worth it? Now, the word that's always going to be up to the individual. I mean, your wallet, your everything, I mean, that that's going to be up to you. Um, I do like the feel and I, and I think there's something to be said about, uh, you know, the, the dispersion, so, you know, hitting it a little closer, hitting it uh, uh, tighter in there a little bit. Is that going to be worth $180 per wedge to you? Well, that, that that's going to be up to you, and you're going to have to try and to find out. I, I think there's definitely something noticeably different uh, about these wedge shafts. Um, I think it's definitely something that, uh, you know, 
in terms of will we see more stuff like this come out to kind of compete with it? I think we, we definitely will. Um, but this, the the Breakthrough Golf stability or, or the Breakthrough Golf uh, zone, uh, you know, they definitely have something going here with uh, with with the stiffness of this thing and, and how accurate it is. It's um, like I said, I, I noticed a difference. So for me, uh, you know, is it worth it? Uh, it, it? It might be. You know, if I went there and, and was doing a wedge fitting and I hit this thing and noticed that I was hitting it straighter and everything, and I was buying new wedges anyway. You know what? I, I, I may I, I may opt for this bad boy and put it in, but um, you know, or even in a sense of you know hitting this thing with with my current wedges and, and all that. Um, you know, I, I do really like these things. I think uh, they definitely have something going on here, and, and, and I was impressed with it. So uh, if you want to check out more, oh, I'm breaking stuff. If you want to check out more, uh, the Breakthrough Golf technology, it's ZNE, but Zone Wedge Shaft. Uh, just go to BreakthroughGolfTech.com, and uh, the Zone Shafts are, are right there. But um, pretty cool uh, pretty cool things. Uh, I was pretty impressed with them. Uh, like I said, I was uh, I was liking uh, both of them. I think it's a good combo that you could probably do. You could probably do one fifteens throughout the whole thing. I mean, it, it's going to you know depending on uh, what you know what, what iron shafts you use and what you're currently using your wedge shafts in terms of what weight you're going to like and all that. Um, I kind of like the transition to go on one fifteen uh, in kind of more you know, the the full club, uh, cl the full shot club, and then go into the one thirty and you know sand and lob. So. Um, if I was throwing in the lob wedge, I'd probably go to the 130 again. So I'd probably go 115 gap, 130, 130, uh, if I went the, went the whole set. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're pretty, uh, pretty impressive in, in terms of, uh, of how consistent they are and how accurate they are. But, uh, it doesn't change much about how you hit the ball. Like I said, the biggest thing is you're going to notice is, you know, the, the club head's not going to, you're going to feel as much movement out of it. It's just going to be kind of a, a stiff, you know. It's a stiff shaft, so you're not going to notice a, a, a big, big deal of rotation or movement uh, of, of the club head throughout the swing, which is uh, which is, I think part of what adds to the the consistency of it. And for me, I really like it. Some people they're maybe going to come out and say they don't. You know, they like a little softer shaft. They like it a little bit. Excuse me, more feel. Uh, I think in in terms of full shots and all that, it does soften uh, the the shot up a little bit. Uh, it does take away some of that vibration from your hands, so full shots, and especially full shots where you miss it a little bit. You, like for me, I hit it low toe is, is kind of my miss uh, generally with with my wedges. It does soften that shot up a little bit. It, it doesn't hurt as much, <laughs> kind of like with that you know aluminum baseball bat on a cold day where it, it just rattles right through your hands. Um, it takes some of that away, and it, it does soften up uh, the the feel of the, of the wedges just a, a little bit. Um, you'll still get the audible part of it. You'll still get the click and, and all that when you miss it low on the face. Um, but, you know, you, you're not going to get as much of that harsh vibration through the shaft as you will uh, with a steel shaft. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with these things. I, I, I really like them. I, I think there's something to it. I, I think the, that uh, Breakthrough Golf definitely has, uh, has definitely improved, uh, you know, the wedge shaft. And I think it is a tighter, uh, more accurate shaft than, than stuff I've, uh, I've, I've played in the past. So, they're probably going to stay in these wedges uh, for right now, <laughs> you know, and then uh, if I do change anything with wedge heads, uh, say, next year, uh, I will probably yank them out and, uh, and pop them in there as well. But uh, overall, really impressed with, uh, with the Breakthrough Golf. Like I said, I, I, I've liked all their stuff. I think they do a really nice job. I think their putter shafts are really great. Um, you know, I think the driver shaft was, was sneaky good if you're looking for that, uh, you know, kind of super lightweight, you know, distant shaft. I think it was, you know, for the, the 50 five gram weight that it was or 54 it was extremely accurate and now i think uh you know what they're doing here the wedge shafts is is really great as well they're putting a lot of a lot of tech into uh, into golf shafts so i think the only thing they have left to do is what do they got woods they got wedges they got putters i guess you know they've, they've got pretty much getting your whole bag so um but I, i've liked a lot of their stuff right now and, and i think they're doing a, a great job i don't think it's just uh you know uh, you know to me I, I don't think it's something that's just you know trying to take some money out of your wallet. I think they're, they're literally giving you technology. Um, it's not cheap. I'll, 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 I'll admit that, but uh, they're giving you technology for, uh, you know, for the specific club in your bag. And, and I, and I think it does, uh, show some improvement. So like I said, go to break, breakthrough golf tech, uh, .com. check out the, the zone wedges to kind of see the specs on them. Uh, then you can probably still see who, uh, who in your area you could, uh, you know, go try them with, uh, go try them out. And, uh, uh, I think you can buy them right off the site as well, but um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, exciting to see that we're seeing more and more of the uh, you know short game 
shafts and, and products kind of see this bigger and bigger uh, uh, push towards uh, for for better tech and and better uh, you know better golf. So um, yeah, so that was uh, you know the the, the BGT uh, uh, shafts. Um, I think that's kind of what I'm going to rock with today. I know it's uh, probably a little shorter episode than I usually go with, but um, that's kind of what I got today. Like I said, I've got some uh, stuff on the horizon. Like I said, today going to go hit some uh, some PXG woods. Uh, going to kind of try a new putter as well and, and some other stuff. So uh, I'll have more talk to you next week, or yeah, I'll have more talk, talk to you about next week and a couple weeks after that, and then hopefully uh, uh, I think I've got a new driver shaft coming so i've got some stuff on the horizon uh you know as winter gets cold i'm not just going to shut it down and you know take a vacation it'd be nice but i'm not going to do that so uh that is the uh the 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 breakthrough golf zone wedge shafts and uh yeah if you got any questions anything like that hit me up on instagram at club junkie pod that's probably the best place to do it uh you know just hit me up with a dm i love talking with you guys um and uh you know yeah if you got there do that and then uh Yeah, I guess uh, we'll talk to you next week. See ya.